Our next speaker uh, hails from Hercules. Where's Hercules? <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. A young man writes a letter to his future son about what it means to know a woman's worth. This piece is called Letters to My Unborn Son. Please welcome Jean J.T. Teodoro. Letters to my unborn son, part three and four. Part three. My son, I want you to learn unlike most sons do about a woman's worth. I hope this poem reaches you in time before you are bombarded by the many ways that men have reimagined women, before disproportionate half-truths overshadow her beauty when she's being true to herself, and the lines between real and absurd are blurred, before you are skeptical of how great a woman can be, and before you raise a daughter who is skeptical of her own capabilities. You meet women who believe in their caricatures, who are looking for a male counterpart, the kind of bad boy who will hit them and put them back in the backwards place they find acceptance in. Their smiles give less greetings than their asses do. Some women find solace in being sold, powerless, and that's fine if it's their choice. But despite what many men in this world believe, it's not our privilege to make choices for women or spite them when they make choices we aren't happy with, or tell an ancient myth that it's her fate to be sold at his disposal. I've seen men cat call and whistle at women in the street, and men who would give a nice and simple compliment, but when she doesn't acknowledge it, he follows up with a, fine then you stuck up bitch. And we wonder why so many women are afraid of us. My son, I don't care if your honeymoon romance turns sour with someone who breaks your heart, who's got you running in circles back and forth to insanity, got you thinking of each thing you said and did, takes all your money, and wants to crush your soul, who spent half your relationship pondering whether she can do better, and as her pardon gift, ends up cheating on you with someone she just met. I don't care if she is the dread queen, walking apocalypse, black widow, devil eating your heart out as she shackles you in her web of manipulations, leaving you to bleed slowly in despair. I'm just saying. Even if you believe that she was the cause of all your misery when she probably wasn't, you don't need to call her bitch or slut, or whatever cop-out profanities men say to justify their misogyny. You don't need to put a hand on her. If you do lay a hand on her, I will make sure her family gets your social security number, your home address, what times of the day you're home, and when you arrive at your house. And when they arrive at your house, you'll already be tied up by the front door. <laughs> If you really need to be angry, sound off on me. I'll be your punching bag. Mm -hmm. Believe me, my son, I know how treacherous a woman can be, but misogyny is not between you and her. It's a betrayal of all women in your life. Don't listen to the idiot friends you might make who follow principles under so-called bro codes. There's nothing brotherly about putting a sister down. <laughs> You're a better man than that. The kind of man you choose to become doesn't have to be whatever mode of a man you're told to fit. My son, I made you. You came from my balls. made to swing at her direction. They were made to hold another and bring happiness to someone else whose intent is more genuine. Don't be afraid to love her. The strength of a woman is not to be feared but to be associated with. I encourage you, my son, to man up and find women who believe in their own strength. If you find a partner who is brilliant, quick-witted, or makes more money than you, so be it. Heck, if she has bigger biceps than you, so be it. You're no less of a man. Because a true man knows that power is nothing to hold hostage, that those who can't carry the privileges they hoard are awaiting defeat. A man's power is measured by the people who love him and who can carry heavy loads with them in solidarity. 
These two cents I picked up along my journey was preserved for you. From a father who grew up in the place where sex slavery was normal, who passed countless brothels on his way to an all boys elementary school. He thought that this is how life was. Women belonged in certain places at a man's liberty. He used to love ideas of her, compared her worth to idealized disproportions, accepting only half of her truths, until a legion of women poets transformed him through story, protest, and motherhood. And he found so much more by embracing her entire truth and its absurdities. He had a single working mother and she showed him the true meaning of strength, like her lifetime of honest work, independent from any man. I'm a father who knows which side of history to take, and this side is where you'll be raised, to make way for her story. This patriarchy, my son, you will learn to fight it, and I will fight to unlearn it. Part four. <laughs> I got a lot of these, man. <laughs> my son, I have much to discover. So you have a paramount responsibility to keep me from being stuck in my old ways. As adults, our aging ears get worn out after hearing so much noise. We forget to distinguish the profoundness of new voices, new, new sounds, new voices that I've heard less but still hear fresh. Remind me that being a father, like being an educator, is just as much about learning as it is teaching. So speak earnestly, my son. I want to hear you and learn from you. Our conversations will revolve around your questions instead of demons of who I expect you to be. And if I fail to know you, may this vow defy time. I will give you this poem so that you can use it to check me. I don't know what kind of man you'll be. It'd be nice if you're attracted to women so that we can relate and talk about our love interests, the nuance of dating, chivalry, the game of chase, and keeping yourself a bit of a mystery. But if you aren't attracted to women, then we could talk about our love interests, the nuance of dating, right. chivalry, the game of chase, and keeping yourself a bit of a mystery. It wouldn't matter if you were gay or straight, I would still be in the lions. Right. And if you instead are born as my daughter, and if you instead are born as my daughter, well, that's a new set of poems and a lot more learning in store for me. <laughs> but this poem is also for you, my little goddess. My most precious gift is to never take away your choice to decide who you are meant to be. All right. Did that brother just say balls? Yeah. This is a respectable show. This is pop, pop tales. Never mind, that was fitting, actually. All right. You know, I was wondering why he was walking so funny. I mean, if his son came out of his balls, he was just... Big balls, he's got big balls. Uh, a school.